Now, everything old is new again. America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. That sign says applesauce. No, no, no. Shh, shh, shh. I'm kidding. It says applause. Uh, Gav, can you do me a, a favor, Gav? Can you, uh, can you click that once? Just click it. There you go. All right. Now, uh, well, remember, you're all a big part of the show. So the better you are, the better Jimmy is. Here we right. go, guys. In five, four, three. From Studio 6B in Rockefeller Center, the National Broadcasting Company presents Late Night with Jimmy And this is Everything Old is New Again with Douglas Viviani and the ever-irascible young David Cohen. How are you, Doug? I'm doing well. Thank you. That's Jeffrey Tambor introducing Jimmy Fallon on uh, The Tonight Show as if he was doing it for Larry Sanders on the Gary Shandling. Well, the Larry Sanders show, which was starring Gary Shandling. Right. So I think it was pretty creative. Another thing that was. Jimmy Fallon does and his people do, whoever set that up, because uh, he was a guest that night, so he had him do it. It was really a lot of fun. This week, we're going to revisit the topic of um, late night TV. Yes. It continues to be the cornerstone of American television and celebrates our pop culture every night, which, of course, you know that we love. Um, but rather than you know have one or two late night talk shows, today there's like Eight talk shows airing every night. You know? Eight. That's At least, amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, you know, there's some more on cable as well, like right. Conan and what have you. So you know, some do, you know, work uh, to be unique. But I think that uh, everything old is new again. Uh, all of us here believe there's still room for improvement. So as such, we're going to introduce you to America's latest and most talked about late night talk show. And it's called Later no, it's called Never Too Late. How do you like that? Is that a nice uh, name? I like it. All right. Le- it's That's our be, talk show, baby. You're going to hear that in the, the fourth and fifth, I should say, third and fourth section right. of our show. So keep listening. Keep you're listening hear- because, uh, well, that's actually your show. I'm not part of it. Yep. It's uh, called- I'm not upset over that, by the way. And uh, but I, I'm, a, I'm a huge, huge fan. Well, I know you're overwhelmed with just, you know, keeping uh, up with what we do here on the radio and everything old is new again. So it's never too late is our television version. And uh, certainly I'll have you along uh, at some point, maybe as a, uh, a gaff. Well, that's well of you, Doug. Whatever it might be. But a gaff? <laughs> in the meantime. <laughs> a key grip or Isn't something? that what uh, Jeffrey Tambor said? Yeah. Anyway, let's take a look at, um, at some of the worst. Before we get to the best, which is going to be ours. We have to take a look at the worst, right? The worst. One of the worst is Jerry Lewis. Let's listen to a little clip of him. I, very honestly, I must tell you that I didn't bet on you. I had a bet on Mr. Moore. And I'm oh, sure you're you aware. You lost your money, huh? Yeah, I certainly did. Now, if you like to lose your money, be a fool and bet on Sonny. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? The big, ugly bear, Sonny Liston. The big, ugly bear. I'm getting ready to put He said. I'm he getting... said. Wait, let's just... Now, you he... talk too much. <laughs> Well, that's Cassius Clay, which later became Muhammad Ali, and he defined, I think, you tell me the problem with Jerry Lewis, one of the problems with Jerry Lewis as a talk show host. What did he just say? He said he talked too much. <laughs> if, if Ali is telling you you talk too much, then you definitely talk too much. And, and let's face it, he stepped on Muhammad Ali's. He had like a punchline or a point I know. to what he was saying. It's like what you do to me. It's terrible. I feel the pain. <laughs> Huh? Yo, yes, correct. sir. Well, let's You're take a look correct. at Alan Thick, your buddy, and see uh, how he makes out on, on the air. I was born in Hungary, and I moved to Australia when I was a kid. Uh, my parents left during the revolution. I was quite quite young then. The Australian Revolution? No, the <laughs> I mean, I don't Australian read the paper. Revolution. Perhaps air travel does that to me. The Hungarian Revolution. I have, we have a very interesting picture that you have brought us of your early days in Australia, and this is something. See that, if they can recognize you. Yeah, let's, probably, okay, good idea. Let's not tell them who is in this picture with Peter to get in well, pretty a, close. Now, this is you on the far right. No, on the other side. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> I mean, two things right there in a matter of 30 <laughs> seconds. Guy doesn't know what revolution he was hiding from or right. running from. He had just said it minutes ago. And then he's got a picture. He's prepare enough to say, okay, guys, you're going to show me a picture. I'm going to be on national TV. Can you tell me what's in the picture? Who's who? I mean, I, this is the guy you liked? 
Well, I thought he was pretty good. I, I, I mean, yeah, he had a few gaffes, uh, calling back to what Jeffrey Dambor, Tambor said. But, you know, I think overall he was like the everyman. He was like you or me going up there and interviewing these celebrities. I, I actually, I enjoyed uh, what he did, yes. All right, I think he was a goof. I think he was one of the, one of the <laughs> poorest ones out there. Then it was Pat Sajak, who is the host still to this day, like 40 years or something, of... Wheel of Fortune. Yes. And he gave it his shot. And, and this was a show that was on CBS um, bef- before David Letterman got took the, the 1130 spot. This was the show on CBS right before that. And Letterman was still at, at NBC at 1230 at this. No. Yeah, at 1230 right, at this time. Right. right. So uh, let's let's take a listen to Pat Sajak. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, uh, I should explain. If it looks like I'm just killing time, uh, I have a reason here. In less than one minute, we will officially become CBS's longest-running show this season. All right, you know, the That's decent funny. startup. That's yeah, he funny. actually wasn't horrible at the the. Uh, believe it or not, I thought on the monologue, but during the show. Ooh. Well, but you know what? It's funny because you'd think hosting a game show would qualify you for, for hosting a talk show, But he kept show, on right? asking people to say your name, introduce where you're from, and tell us a little bit about yourself. That's all his interviews were. It was the same like interview. he does with the talk show. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, with like, the game show, right? Like, it's the same questions as... <laughs> all right. Well, I just thought of that. I mean, it's, it's just, That's very funny. All right. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's just crack it himself up here. It was quite funny, though. All right, Chevy Chase, the goal goes back to Carson. Let's listen to what he has Last to say. Last time you were here, you were sitting here. You hosted the show. I tried. First time I've ever done a monologue. It went uh-huh. for about 18 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> finally Freddie came out and said, that's it. I mean, I sat here thinking, geez, this is going to be a breeze, because I don't know if you remember, 10 years ago, people used to say, Chevy Chase is going to be the next Johnny Carson. I mean, this is, he's going to be taking over the show. You've got to know how hard this is to do. There's nobody who's going to be the next Johnny Carson. And uh, certainly Chevy Chase was, and I don't mean to pick on him. I love him in the movies, uh, funny yeah, and so forth. Very let's, funny. let's be honest. I don't, I don't want to pick on any of these people that I don't. You know, they're just in the wrong environment when it comes to a talk show. Uh, you know, this fella, you will hear later on, but he's giving you the inside word. He did uh, host, uh, guest host The Tonight Show, and that was Carson talking about it. And it's funny how Carson keeps popping up no matter what you do in right. late night. You know, he's interviewed everyone. They've all said different things to him that, that are relevant to whatever discussion you're having. So uh, he's a, a, you know, a plethora of of uh, information, if that's the way to say it. But Chevy Chase is saying how difficult it is. What do you think? Do you think it would be easy or hard to do a talk show? Oh, gosh, I think it would be really hard. Um, you know, it, it's it's just getting the rhythm down. That's that's a whole thing. But also just keeping it fresh and doing it every night. That, to me, would be the real killer. Just just how it would wear on you, I think. Yeah, and, I, you know, the, the source of material can no longer be just from you, as we talked about with Jay Leno. Right. It can't right. be. You can't write, you know, five days a week of jokes and whatever yep. else. So um, you've got to find some talented people that find, they say that in the industry, find your, your voice, you know? Yes, that's um, very true. And that's hard, hard to do. You're on your game today, buddy. You really, I like Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. There you go. You really want to get on this this uh, Never Too Late show, don't you? I do. Okay. I want to I be your, your Ed McMahon. But, uh, all right. Yeah. We'll, we'll practice uh, your laugh. Let's see how that works. Uh, naturally, in 1993, after Chevy Chase professed to the world that he was no good at being a talk show host, he got to be a talk show host. They we'll, gave him his own show. Right. We'll visit that in a few minutes right after these break, this break. We hear the Larry Sanders theme. There it is. Everything old is new again. Live on tape from Hollywood, the Larry Sanders Show. Tonight, join Larry and his guests, John Lovett. And what a show that was, the Larry Sanders show, right? Oh, I mean, it was so good. Uh, yeah, it, it hit the mark. I mean, so I mean, I don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but that's what I imagine goes on behind. Right, the scenes. it's it's exactly what you think would happen behind the scenes, um, and and a lot of it was was not only funny, but it was sort of like that Larry David kind of humor where it's kind of hard to watch sometimes because it's so painfully embarrassing for the characters to deal with Larry Sanders or what he dealt with behind the scenes. Right. Um, I, I thought it was terrific. Yeah. Really. And, and then since then, just like Seinfeld in some ways, the 
the star of these two, I think, terrific shows really have done not a heck of a lot after that. No. It's like, well, I guess you get to the, because Gary Shanley had a show before that as right, well. Right, the Gary Shanley show. Which was pretty right. funny. But, um, you know, the, the point is then, you know, I guess when you hit something that's, per, I'm going to say perfection. I mean, that was really a great show, whatever. It was, Maybe but it's it, not perfection, you, but, you know, what else can you do in your career? How do you right. follow it up? It could have gone longer. I mean, it, it wasn't on the air for the, all that long, right? And when it was, everyone was saying, hey, now. Hey, now. Right? I mean, right. uh, so that it was it was around uh, the, the the water cooler. People were talking yeah. about it, you know. Um, so anyway, I, I, I enjoyed that, but I also think that there's more that can be done uh, than they did with the, the fictional stuff. There could be more fictional. Um, well, actually, didn't Tina Fey do a show that was that was behind, like behind the scenes of uh, Thirty Rock? Live. Yeah. Thirty Rock, yeah. But that's not really. It's I mean, not a talk be, show. Right. And they did the Larry Sanders, and there's this Fernwood tonight, right? Which they did. Which was which, a mock talk show, which was really funny, really good. A real talk show that yeah. was mocking talk shows. They basically. had they had guests on, but the guests were always prepared as to what to do. I don't know. Right. I, I I think there's there's more to explore, and I think you're that. going to do that. Aren't you we later on? Certainly are. And mm-hmm. the fictional shows as we turn back tonight, the clock and uh, enjoy it. Everything old is new again. The talk show it. version. You're listening to Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Boy, what a great audience. And it's the first time they haven't stood up for me. Um. I am up, though. I'm up for this show. It's a great show. Uh, great audience from Los Angeles. Audiences are clearly the best audiences. I'm a little sad because, uh, and I have a message for my fellow Angelians. Uh, there was a poll taken that ranked our fair city as the third most dangerous place to live in the United States. Now, no, I don't want anybody getting down or having second thoughts about living in Los Angeles because of this poll. I think if we all pull together and work really hard... I know we can be number one. As Chevy Chase on Everything Old is New Again, his uh, talk show from, I believe, it was 1993. He... Um he really missed the. It was definitely ninety three. He missed. He missed the mark. I think uh, totally. Two, three things there to come pop up to me. Number one, he is talking to the audience and he calls them they. He yeah, says, I noticed that. They haven't stood up for me or whatever he said. They're right. ridiculous. Second thing he said, um, uh, he, he, as a comedian, you, you know, you've done this before. You want to get a cheap, easy laugh or at least applause or at least a smile. You tell the audience how great how they are. How great you are, yeah. I mean, right. come on. It's, it's so uh, sophomoric. And then the last thing is that joke is an old rehashed joke that from that, I mean, Mel Brooks told that when he was young. Yeah, you could see that coming <laughs> around the block. Oh, I mean, my goodness. He really... So that was his monologue. Let's listen to him speak to Goldie Hawn, a woman who he did, I think, two movies with at the time. And uh, let's listen to how, you know, how much chemistry he has with her. <laughs> I'm just thinking, because I know yeah. one of your oldest, Ollie. Yeah. Oliver. And I just a little thing you don't know about, but I happen to know that it's his birthday today. I knew Ollie when he was two. Yes. And uh, so he was about knee high to a... Uh, and, uh, <laughs> You're uh, yeah. Uh, but today, September 7th, this is his 17th birthday. Yes, it is. Can so, you believe that? Can you believe that? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Do you actually, I mean, First of all, the chemistry, like they can you know, really not communicating. A lot of I don't nervous think. giggling, and yeah. he's gotten names wrong apparently of the kids. Yeah. Sounds, I mean, and then there's and he's si- calling up. This what he does. He calls up. It's a national talk show. He's got you know this woman on that's been on you know laughing and movies galore. This is back as ninety three, and he's been with her in movies, and they've made tons of money and entertainment. And she he, he tries to ingratiate himself personally to her on national TV by calling. Her son up on stage, and I cut it off. They sang for 45 seconds, happy birthday. So the son came up yes. on the stage. and they basically sang to him. There was, 
was no joke. Right. It, that was it. Oh, God. So, I mean... <laughs> That's when you say, why am I watching this, right? Exactly, exactly. I'm taking this from the perspective. Let's be fair about it. I don't know my you know anything about doing these things, but let's be honest. Watching it, wow, is that painful. It is. Oh, well, you boy. can tell what not to do, right? Right. Which I think uh, <laughs> we're learning by listening to these clips. <laughs> right. Wow. Uh, so now we're going to try to take a look at fiction. Uh, this is, Sometimes the fiction is better than reality. Listen to Robert Good De Niro, the king of comedy. Gentlemen. Let me introduce myself. My name is Rupert Pupkin. <laughs> I was born in Clifton, New Jersey, which was not at that time a federal offense. <laughs> now, I'd like to begin by saying that my parents were too poor to afford me a childhood in Clifton. <laughs> but the fact is, you know, that no one is allowed to be really too poor in Clifton, because once you fall below a certain level, they exile you to Passaic. <laughs> But like everyone else, I grew up in large part thanks to my mother. If she were only here today, I'd say, Hey, Mom, what are you doing here? You've been dead for nine years. Yeah, mediocre comedy at best, but I still think it was better than Chevy Chase. <laughs> he had a better monologue, right? <laughs> Rupert That's, Pupkin. Exactly. Um, let's continue to dive into that movie because it's the cornerstone of the fictional aspect of right. TV talk shows and listen to uh, a little of this. Bert, I said, this is Jerry, Jerry Langford, and I'm in deep trouble. Now, you best pay attention. I have a gun at my head if a man who identifies himself as the king, cards upside down, is not allowed to be the first guest on. You got a blank card. Hold on, Bert. (laughs) I'm reading from two cards. (laughs) <laughs> if you remember that movie, you got to go back. And, and if you haven't it, seen you know, it, it's a real it's, it's dark definitely worth comedy, it. but it's, yeah, definitely. And that's Jerry Lewis pops up again. There he is again. There he right, is again. Right. He loves the talk show uh, genre. I, I give him credit. He did a great job in this movie in a serious role. But right. that was so funny when, you know, he's, he's got a gun to his head. He's got to read the cue cards and these, these characters can't even get it right. Anyway, um, I wonder if that's sort of the way that Chevy Chase got his talk show. I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he kidnapped uh, Johnny Carson. It might be possible. <laughs> Here's a show that I absolutely love. I think it's one of the best things that was ever on television. I might be crazy to say that, but wow, was this fun. Tonight from Fernwood, Fernwood Tonight, coming to you live with your host for tonight, Mr. Barth Gimble. The spaceman came and had his way with me. Well, this is something new, Barth. He has come back. He came back last night, but this time he brought a friend with him. This again was your husband's bowling night, coincidentally enough. Coincidentally, yes. And the friend, however, did not participate, just stood around and watched oh, and good. did take pictures. He <laughs> and, took uh, pictures? Yes, he Well, did. now this upsets me personally because this shows the extent of what uh, pornography has gone to. It's in <laughs> outer space. Well, we know you might be uh, on the cover of some smutty outer space rag. Now, don't you get smart with it. I'll smack you. You don't want What about my reputation? I have no doubt that my telephone number may be on the bathroom walls all over the universe. <laughs> All right, it's just representative. It's hard because they don't do punchlines. All right, but but to explain because maybe right. people have, don't know what this show was about. Of so. course, it's uh, it's Martin Mull and Fred Willard. Martin Mull being the host of a local uh, talk show that's on like the local cable television station, and they have the local people come. Uh, no, no celebrities, local people, local celebrities, if you will, uh, come on and uh, and do whatever their their acts are or discuss different topics. And this one, they had Fanny. Flag, the actress uh, pr- pr- presenting herself as a neighbor there, right. uh, who says that she was abducted by UFOs and, and the fun ensues. Right. The thing that I loved about the show is that a lot of that is let ad lib, or at least it's free form. Uh, when they talked about this, um, especially Fred Willard, who's a very uh, well known ad lib, or popular and, and done so many uh, right, movies. Christopher Guest movies. Right. right. But he, he's supposed to be one of the best ad libbers around. And yeah. that was really the feature of this show when he talked about it's, it's your husband's uh, bowling, bowling night. night. Right. You know, that's, that's an ad lib. The pornography. I don't know, but it, it's possible that that stuff was ad libbed as well. Right. It was. Um, um, it was just so free flowing, so interesting, so fun to listen to. Did you ever watch it? When I you're... did. Yeah, I did. Um, 
And again, that was it went through a few iterations, right? It was Fernwood Tonight first, and then it became then it went off the air after like a little while, like six months, and then it came back on for like only another six months as America Tonight. You right. just couldn't find its audience. If you go to YouTube and want to check it out, I might be insane, but I think it's still very funny. I think it was ahead of its time, and yeah. I think that's why it just didn't cut it at the at that time. If it was on now, I think it would get a really big following. I, I agree Definitely. with you. I agree with you. And it's similar in some, one, in some ways to Larry Sanders. Let's listen to his discussion with his son. You know, Hank, I was just uh, wondering why you say that hey now thing. What do you mean? Would you mind not? doing it on the show anymore it gets on my nerves it gets on the audience's nerves as no, well sir. no yes, sir it does. no look you're not out there and believe me it is it's very big with the audience no. and I'm, I'm gonna tell you something else i think it helps make the show work it's part of our whole interplay on camera by interplay you mean the times we're both awake hey now <laughs> just Jeffrey Tambor. Um, again, it goes back. He's the gentleman that introduced this particular segment, uh, show, I should say, uh, on the Jimmy Fallon uh, Tonight Show and all that. It, it was, I just, we spoke about this. This show was just uh, another one that, it, it hit it because it was at the right time. So you're saying that if Fernwood Tonight maybe was on the air in the 90s when, when Larry Sanders' show was on, uh, it, may have, it may have hit. I think even today would find a home somewhere and get, gain, gain some, some following. Like, There's a guy. Like, why wouldn't we contact Martin Mull? He, he had a great career, but I don't know what he's doing anymore. Why can't yeah. he come into everything old is new again and, uh, and teach us some of the tricks? Why not? Why not? Indeed, I mean, he was. He we was got. So we fun. had the devil on last week. Why can't we get Martin? Yeah, Mull? we get the devil. We get Martin Mull. Come on. I mean, all right. Uh, maybe we can't get Jeffrey Tambor, but <laughs> yeah, we can get Martin Mull. Gotta be realistic. Fred yeah. Willard, we could get. He had some problems right. recently. He's maybe looking to increase his profile a little bit. <laughs> if you know any of these characters, tune them on to our show at Everything Old Is New Again dot biz. We'll have right them communicate with us. Stay with us. Oh, thank you, Martin. Yes, we'll be right back right after these words. Say, Charlie, why the arm and the sling? Yeah, I walked straight into that busted street sign in front of Frank's Automat. Well, you must have been really sore, Adam. You said it, pal. I said, say, what's a big idea making a fella trip out there? I was going to sock him right in a kisser. He's all wet. Why, you ought to sue him, Charlie. I have half a mind to do just that. But where am I going to get that kind of dough? Say, I know a fella just got me out of a big jam, and he didn't break the bank. You don't say. Yeah, the law office of Douglas Viviani. The law office of Douglas Viviani? That's right, the law office of Douglas Viviani. Viviani. That's what I said, Viviani. He a straight shooter? He's a cat's meow. He's on the up and up? Doug's ace is with me. Is that so? He's a bee's bees. Well, that's just swell. You have his number? You can call him at 631-681-1910 or email him at vivianilaw.com. Wait, what, what was that last part? What, email? Yeah, what's email? Vivianilaw.com. Now, back to America's entertainment pop culture talk show, Everything Old is New Again, with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. It's the Never Too Late Show, starring Douglas Viviani. Douglas's guests tonight are Matthew McConaughey, Paul McCartney, Sylvester Stallone, and musical guests from Fernwood tonight, Happy Kine and the Mirth Makers. My name is Bradford Wells, and here for the first time, your host, Douglas Viviani! Hey, hey welcome everybody, here we go, that's some applause. Great, great to be with you tonight. Uh, welcome to the one and only Never Too Late. Listen, I have to tell you a little something. Before the show started this past weekend, I went to a wedding with my wife. And this kind of points out the differences to me between men and women. My wife and I loved We had a wonderful wedding. We enjoyed it. Ter ter terrific wedding. And we're dancing. And I'm talking to uh, her friends at the wedding. It's from her, one of her friends' wedding. And we're talking about like the Dessert, and we're having we're joking around about the dessert, talking about how oh, be careful, you know, don't eat too much, you know, you may get diabetes, or you know, you've got you know the typical standard silly little jokes, right? You've got the um, uh, the the the, the uh, coffee there, you know, a little espresso, and we're pouring in a little bit of a uh, little nice Godiva liqueur, or what have you, and I you know make little comments like oh, you know, be careful, you know, you don't want to drink too much, uh, you know, may go down the road of not being able to drive home or become an alcoholic, whatever. You know, these things that happen, and uh, 
So, long story short, you, I go to bed that night, and I'm ecstatic. I've had a nice time. I thought my wife had a great time, but my wife, you know, she's very tight-lipped, so I really can't read it sometimes. But this is the difference between men and women, as far as I'm concerned. I get to bed, and I just want to go to sleep. Am I, am I wrong? Is, what, else, what else do you do, Bradford? I mean, you go to sleep, you, you just lay right down, right? Good, and good. You go, there you go. And you go right out, correct? Correct. All right. Hour and a half later, I'm getting nudged. You know... Did you know that my friend, Michael, his father, did you know that he has diabetes? Is there a reason? Is there a reason in the world why you would mention that? Oh, geez. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sorry. All right. I turn around. Next, like, half hour later. She can't fall asleep because of all this nonsense. She's embarrassed by me. Uh, Do you you have any clue? Do you remember uh, that, you know... um, you have a little bit of a problem. You want to try to lose a couple of pounds. Is there a reason why? Any reason in the world why you got to put three packages of sugar into that coffee? <laughs> and that's where Good. I'm at. Anyway. Uh, Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Funny. Bradford, come on over. I would love to have a conversation with you. Your voice is so familiar to me. I really need to know. You're a new co-host on this brand new show. I love it. Tell me a little something about yourself. Where, where have I seen you before? Well, Doug, as you... I thought you knew. I was the host of Movie Tone News for many years, back from uh, 1935, up until the time I was fired back in 1965. Interesting. And since then, not too much. Out of work. All right. But there's been something you've done recently that I do know about that I'm very proud of. I'm going to play a little clip for the audience. We'll see if anybody remembers your I've appearance here. an old newsreel from ancient Greece. Going to give us a little idea of what is the real story of Hercules anyway? Hercules, born of Zeus and Hera. Hera was upset about the infidelity of Zeus, when she finds out that Hercules is not her son, in time makes her son insane, and Hercules kills his own children. I mean, is that part of, uh, I mean, that's really, I I was going to say, audience, you got, that was a high point of the career, no? You're too kind, Doug. I really, I appreciate... I must say, you, you've resurrected my career, and for that I'm eternally grateful and happy to be here as your co-host or sidekick. Would uh, By the way... Uh, uh, I would say sidekick. Co-host is a little too strong. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Fun. Good. <laughs> I like you say good. Does that really mean good, or is that being sarcastic? Oh, no, I'm not sarcastic. You know why? Because you are a guy that just tells the truth. Straight out? Like, you're a documentary maker. Everything you say is true, correct? Actually, yes. So if you say good, true. the audience should catch on. And, you know, I mean, just as a little hint. Right. Good is good. But also, our show is about honesty. We're going to talk to a few guests now, and it's going to be a little different than the usual. Good. <laughs> it's going to be a little different than the usual talk show, because we want to have straight out honesty between me, the guests, and the audience. What do you think about that audience? Yes or no? All right. So we're going to bring out our first guest. Uh, Bradford, why don't you introduce uh, our first guest here? All right, Douglas, our first guest coming out today is a famous actor, and his name is Matthew McConaughey! There he is, Matthew. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for coming. This crowd can't get enough of you. Listen to them. Wow. Why is that? What's up with this? Uh, I guess they just like me, Doug. I mean, uh, I, I'm... I, <laughs> You're getting laughs already. Listen, I want to ask you a question. Seriously. Maybe it's because I'm not wearing a shirt. This is the That thing. could be. Uh, you always bought these shirts right down to the... To the you look like a John Travolta-ish type of character. Is there a reason why you're doing that? Matter of fact, I just want to... You just came in from L.A. I, I, I'm aware of that, That's correct? That's right. That's right. And how was your... We sent a little car over for you. Did you enjoy it or... Yeah, it was okay. It just, uh, you know, it wasn't a Lincoln, Doug. And uh, you know how much I love Lincoln. I know, you're, getting, you're on the Lincoln. Uh, you, you just actually it was good that you mentioned Lincoln. It's a nice new. We'll get a, like a couple of uh, uh, cup holders or something from Lincoln in the mail because of your, your nice mention of the, the Lincoln brand. All right, all right, all right. But what I want to really know is when you, you're doing Magic Mike and these other kind of movies, is that what it takes to be a big star to just take your shirt off? You know what I like about the Lincoln, though, Doug? It, it, it takes me back to my past, and, you know, I'm driving on the road, and I just run into this big bull, and he's looking at me, and, and I'm looking at him, and I'm realizing 
maybe I should turn around and go the other way. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm trying to relate to what you're saying. I really am. You're, you're a very deep individual, apparently. I'm very deep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, what I'd like to know is when you're acting, is there some history you have besides having great abs uh, that, you know, some, something you've done, you've done a Shakespeare, you've done any kind of real acting other than like Magic Mike, which guess, by the way, you take your shirt off. Did you know that if I, there's a button on the dashboard, if I just push the button, it, the car goes in reverse, right in reverse. It parks itself, I think. And it parks itself. Yeah, okay. And, that, and, uh, and that's a metaphor for life, I think. Are you trying to tell us that you actually drive? Ooh, thank you. Thank you. You actually drive? Come on, be honest. We sent the car. You, you, you sat in the back in that limo. That was a nice little uh, perk of the, the trade here. Do you, do you telling us you drive those commercials with like, like a, 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 a green background? You know, those. Well, I, you know, it's me driving, though. But I tell you, if you have seen any of the new commercials, uh, they, they're not letting me talk anymore. See, I wonder why they do that. I'm very disappointed, actually. Um, yeah, I know. think the ratings have gone way up since you stopped talking. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> that was funny, right? That's a joke. <laughs> that's funny. Dad. The audience didn't think so. I don't hear them laughing. But uh, I would suggest that you, there's a little more to you than, than just talking about Lincolns, I would I think. Is there a movie that comes to mind that, besides Magic Mike, that you've made that really you would suggest everyone really should go and watch? Uh... uh not, none comes point. to mind right now, Doug, that uh, I would recommend. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working on a new movie right now. Uh, it's starring me, and um, it's starring me and my Lincoln. And I'm in the front seat, not wearing a shirt. Uh, and that's basically the whole movie for about 90 minutes. I, I'm going to give you a quote here. This is a quote. Everybody, this is a quote. We've done some research. My lifestyle, living on the beach, running with my shirt off, doing romantic comedies is your life. Is that what we're trying to say here? Well, it should be everyone's life, though, not just mine, right? I mean, it must be your life, too. It uh, could be if I actually had the time to get down and do the ab work that you do. Uh, at this point, you can see I need a little training. Maybe you could take me under your wing. We'll be right back on everything. We'll be right back uh, after these words. Stay with me. Here we go. I have a lot more to say. You do have more to say. All right. Well, come on back and uh, tell us uh, where you stand next time you're in town. You know, we're done with you at this point. All right. Well, it's been great, Doug. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a Lincoln waiting for me? Out? <laughs> I do not. Uh, That's a shame. I, there's a That's bunch a of cougars outside looking for you. I can tell you that much. All right. I'll take it. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be back. And this was a little piece of the pie. Uh, now you're behind the scenes because we're off the air from uh, from Never Too Late. And we're going to now uh, turn the table a little bit and, and have a conversation with uh, Bradford Wells. And I'm wondering if Bradford has any. Um, any thoughts on the first thought, the first beginning of the show? It's not as easy to think, is it? No, especially when your guests are not answering questions, Doug. They're just, you know, in la-la land somewhere. I, I think that's what you call it. It's tough. I mean, you, we, we're trying to do a show that's sh straight out honesty. I tried to show my disdain as best as I could. I, I don't think ways. he uh, got it. He got a word. little bit over his head, I would the say. The phrase I'm looking for. Yes, he did not get it. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, maybe we're a little too cerebral. We might be going down the Dick Cavett route. I don't know uh, of uh, talk shows in that we're very cerebral and some people just don't catch on. Especially our guests. Could be. That could be the problem. But could we have be, although, Paul McCartney coming up. Very excited about that. I, I believe he's much more jovial. I yes. hope so. And then we've yeah. got, uh, and I, I truly like him. Uh, I don't know about this uh, McConaughey character. And we have Sylvester Stallone, who's got a new uh, Rocky movie in the, in the works. So um, I'm looking forward to that. And we'll uh, continue to experiment here on Everything Old is New Again, uh, Never Too Late. <laughs> It's going well so far. We'll be right back after these words. Stay with us. This is Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen.
Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Never Too Late. It's terrific, terrific to experience a first evening like this. I feel like it's uh, my wedding night and a little bit nervous here, but uh, full of confidence and vigor. And uh, at this point, it's time for Bradford Wells to introduce our next guest. Feel free. Is that applause for me? Thank you. <laughs> He's the forget this guy. Well, thank you. Douglas, our next guest, is a renowned popular musician. You might have known him from a group called The Beatles. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul McCartney. Ah, very nice to meet you, Paul. Hello, Doug. Big, big, big fan. Oh, you're getting a nice reception here. We are. This is a nice, great new show. I'm sorry we didn't have you first on the list. I don't know where that came from. Who booked what? To me, you'd been the first guest. Well, I, I would have been the first guest, but uh, Matthew, he, he, he locked me in a Lincoln. This is, <laughs> this is I, I couldn't get out. <laughs> because we sent, of course, the Lincoln. Good. <laughs> We sent the Lincoln out to the Hamptons to pick you up. We we we, we just picked a, like a little Chevy to pick this other he's character. A, he's up. a bit of an odd bird, I'd say. He sure is. I'll tell you. What's new in the life? I know you're going on tour. Uh, that's exciting. At 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 this point in your career, you're you're still selling out like crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, look, I love it. That's what I live for. So um, yeah. Yeah, are you going to come see me? I am. Well, how about a little, can I get a little backstage pass, maybe? Oh, sure, sure. I got a little six and a three-year-old, and I want to bring them up properly to the, the, the music scene, and I think that you're right on right on path with uh, uh, what I want them to like. I'd love to have them, definitely. Great, great. And so I'll tell you, uh, I've been a big fan of a long time. I've just seen recently, though, Ringo is making news with, uh, the, with the Beatles. Good for Ringo, by the way, I'd like to say. Good for him. Are you familiar with what's, what's he in the news for these? States. Well, apparently, you know, he sold a bunch of uh, musical instruments, I think. and He's got an auction coming up, absolutely, uh, in December, and he's selling uh, his drum kit that was on the Ed Sullivan show. He's selling a couple of other items, and it looks to me like he's got your bass for sale. I don't yeah, know what's up with that. I was hoping you wouldn't go there, Doug. <laughs> well, again, we're all about honesty in this show. Yeah, That's the problem. I can see that. <laughs> so, you know, Ringo, look, we all have a soft spot for Ringo, right? So he came and he, he needed to borrow my bass. And I said, oh, all right, then. I'll be a good sport. I'll give him the bass and promise he'd give it back now, to me. Now, this is the bass that, sorry to interrupt you, but this is the bass that you've been playing forever. Oh, yeah, uh, it's a Hona bass, so right. left-handed bass. Okay. Yeah. Um, and does Ringo play the bass? Well, you know, he doesn't. I was a bit curious about it. I think I heard he used it for a Halloween uh, costume last week. I, I'm not it sure. Could I mean, be. Be, that could was, be. It could be. So feel free. So what, what's, it, what's it all about? What, so well, he never returned it. Interesting. He never returned it. Now I see it's being sold in his auction. I, I, they're estimating about 800000 for that guitar. Wait. Bass. What? That is what they're estimating the price for to be. my guitar? Correct. Now, that could be, I don't know, that could be a couple of nights at Madison Square Garden. Uh, I don't know how much you make, but uh, that seems to be like a pretty decent That's number. So, it's so weird I'm starting to affect a London accent for some reason <laughs> instead of Liverpool. <laughs> well, living so, in the Hamptons <laughs> will do that to you, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, quite right. <laughs> we'll have to call them then. Uh, by the way, uh, you're in the Hamptons. It's in the yeah. area of the network of Everything Old is New Again. LI News right. Radio's out there. Um, I listen to the show. You do? Oh, yeah. I'm oh, yeah. Interested. Big fan. So you listen to this show, or that show, Everything Old is New Again. Now you'll be watching this show, which is, uh, you know, if it goes over, never too late on television. Have you, uh, or are you a fan of the old style, you know, Dick Cavett interviews? In other words, have you seen your old compatriot, the old reruns of uh, of John Lennon? Uh, well, I have YouTube, yeah. And have you seen oh, yeah. John Lennon uh, on those interviews? Oh, yeah, I have. I He's have. got that Yoko Ono next to him. Yeah. And she's yeah. egging him on. And uh, was that what it was like uh, when he was with the Beatles sitting there for Let It Be? Uh, well, you know, look, I'm not going to trash him or her. Uh, Yoko and I have a really good relationship, actually. But uh, that interview is horrible. Yeah. yeah. We played it a little early. You've, you've heard our show. We did a I've, show on talk shows. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. A little yeah. bit. Of, he's just a little bit of a nudge, I would say. No, a little bit of a... Not sure what a nudge is yeah, here. Sure. Yeah. Why don't you tell a story about... Oh, yeah. Elephant. Oh, plenty of that. Yeah. Why don't you play the B, B chord instead oh, yeah. of C chord? Yeah. She, she told you kind of what to I'm do. I'm getting on. flashbacks from Abbey Road, actually. <laughs> now, I heard that, that, that George Harrison was an ecstatic during uh, the, the, the production of Let It Be and some other albums. He's saying that... 
you didn't really, uh, you know, give him any freedom to do anything. You told him exactly what to do, exactly what to play, and where and when. Well, yeah, I mean, we, I'm Paul McCartney, and I had John Lennon, and you know, where's George Harrison going to fit in there, Doug? I mean, well, let me ask you a question: Did you do the same thing with all the characters from Wings? Yeah. So, like, that's pretty sure. much and not a lot of people like that. No, not a lot of people like me, yeah. actually, so, when you get to know me personally. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank Winston. you, Bradford. Thank you very much. All right, listen, Paul McCartney is terrific. Thank you uh, for coming uh, to the show. Doug, best of success with it. It's a great show. I hope everybody continues to watch it. Thank you. Thank you. We've got Ringo coming up next week. We'll, we'll talk to, uh, to him about it. Tell him he it. owes me $800,000. Do I get a finder's fee? Sure. All right, terrific. Thank you. All right, we've got our next guest lined up. Winton uh, uh, Bradford, I mean. <laughs> Would you, Good. <laughs> you like that? Would you please Good. introduce our next guest briefly? We've got a few minutes left. Douglas, our next guest comes straight from... He's coming straight from his latest film, of which title I do not know his name. is Sylvester Stallone. There he is. All right. This is some show, huh? Sylvester, it's great to see you. Hey. Uh, I loved Rocky Balboa, what you've done with the Rocky series, hey, except thanks, for that Doug. five. I don't know what you were thinking there. Uh, no, that wasn't a good movie. Oh, you agree? Okay, good. Yeah. You really had a tough time, I heard, from getting from five to, to have someone actually finance Rocky Balboa, but you did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. And yeah. Uh, you're in great shape now. It looks oh, like yeah, you're, yeah. yeah. I, I see you've got a cookbook, I know, from a couple years back, and the cookbook said that that's the reason for your great shape is that you followed these recipes. Is that the truth? Uh, well, yeah, that and steroids. Uh, ah, so I, I love steroids, Doug. I love them. You do? Yeah. Still to this day. They're delicious. Because yeah. I tell you, when I look at the close-up of you with the shirt off, when you were, when you were exercising in the Rocky Balboa, I could kind of see a lot of the pimples there, brother. Oh, how are you seeing my pimples? Well, I mean, yeah, the pimples yeah. on the back, which are sort of the sim- sim- symptomatic of, of steroids. Were you peeking in my dressing room before? No, in the movies. In the movies. What do you got to peek in my dressing room? <laughs> what do you got to do with that? This is going horribly long. Sylvester, <laughs> I wish you all the best. All the Paul McCartney's heading on out to the Hamptons. Would you like to take a ride with him in the nice Lincoln? Uh, is McConaughey going to be there? McConaughey's got the... He's with, I'll beat the stuffing out of that guy. You will? You right now. Yeah, you want me to go ride with him? I would love All it. All right. I take a ride with, with him right. to LaGuardia. He's in the uh, the Chevy. All right. You All got right. it, Thank buddy. Thank you. Enjoy it. Have a nice night. and Appreciate it. Come on back. Bradford. We yes. got a few, few minutes left. We have a nice, happy... Uh, I should say a nice musical guest... I'm letting on who it is. It's from Fernwood tonight. This is a gentleman that I've been looking forward to book a long time. The tour he's opening for McCartney. To tell you a little something. Wow, I McCartney did not doesn't. Know that. Ha- yeah, McCartney does not have many people open for him. So if you could do me a favor and introduce our next guest, Doug. Our next guest is from Fernwood tonight. Please welcome Happy Kine and the Mouth Makers. All right. Applaud now, people. Here they are. I took my baby to the drive-in show. She turned the speaker down kind of low. Then she turned on the radio. I watched the silent movie taking boogie down. She's got the boogie fever. Oh man, that a great song that is. I'm I'm loving it. I'm eating it up. Come on over, uh, Fred Duvall. That is Fred Duvall, by the way, from Fernwood tonight. Besides that, he was a musical director that created My Three Sons, the theme song to My Three Sons. Did you know that, Brad? No. Uh, yeah, Bradford. Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> It's the first show, Doug. It's okay if you don't remember my name all the time. <laughs> but I, I, did you realize that Everything Old is New Again, our sister radio station, played uh, and had a six-show extravaganza of what? Theme songs. TV theme, theme songs, songs from TV shows. Exactly. Yes. And part of that was the discussion of Fred Duvall. Yes. And he created My Three Sons. Good. And he was just on our show with... Oh, I like that. Larry Good. 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 Thank you for coming. We're enjoying it. We'll come on back. Everything old is new again next week. It was a rather quick ending. I love it. Steve Duchesne and me. 
Which is the reason why we need a one-minute recap. (laughs) (laughs) That was rather difficult, a rather uncomfortable situation. I think next time what you need to do for a talk show is to actually pre-interview your guests. So this way you have a little idea of what they're going to say and what it's all about. Yes, Douglas, knowing the questions beforehand (laughs) would be quite helpful in answering them. All right. I think it went swimmingly. Oh, you do? Yes. Well, that's how come. That, that comes from a guy that hasn't worked since 1965, except for doing a, a little bit spot on everything old is new again. But I'll take that from where it, it comes from. And uh, <laughs> thank you for the, uh, the applause, ladies and gentlemen. We will be back next week on Everything Old is New Again to continue the frivolity. Who are the guests next week? Though? I have no idea yet. Oh, they haven't, they haven't told them. you. Uh, mm. But you'll be here, and so will I, and that's all you need to know. Good. Enjoy. Everything Old is New Again. Dot biz. Join Larry and his guests, John Lovitz, 